Okay, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make Portuguese tarts. Um, Portuguese tarts are also called nutters. Um, I, I don't know what it means, but that's the official name. Portuguese tarts are not impossible to make, but it's not an easy recipe. So I'd say it's probably an intermediate one. Um, there's a lot of equipment, as you can see. Um, but it's pretty much all necessary. Now, what you're going to need, you'll need a spatula or some sort of spoon. Uh, you need a pastry brush. You need a sifter because you need to be able to sift the flour and the corn flour. Um, you need white sugar, vanilla. It can be, uh, this is vanilla bean extract. Natural vanilla tastes better, but you could use artificial if you wanted to. You'll need corn flour, a phyllo pastry, free range eggs. They don't have to be free range, but they'll taste nicer if they are. You need white milk, or like normal milk, margarine or butter, plain flour. You'll need a glass or something to melt margarine in. And you'll need two muffin trays because this recipe makes 18 tarts and there's not enough if you just use one. Um, you also need a saucepan, but the saucepan, um, it needs to be a medium sized saucepan because that's how you make the custard. Um, so the lid, yeah, you probably don't need a lid, it'll just make it a bit faster. So the first step of this recipe um, is to get milk and sugar and boil it in the saucepan to make the custard. So you're going to need one and a half cups of milk. I'm using light white. Um, you can use full cream, full cream if you want. It doesn't make any difference really. So I'll mix one and a half cups of white, uh, one and a half cups of light milk with half a cup of sugar and put this in the saucepan and boil it. Okay, so that's one and a half cups of milk and half a cup of white sugar. And then put this on the stove at maximum heat. Um, it'll take a few minutes to boil. So while this is happening, um, if you get four eggs and just whisk them, if you don't know what a whisk is, you can use a fork, but if you have a whisk, it's one of these. So just put put the four eggs in a bowl and mix them together. You don't have to separate them or anything. Okay, so with the eggs, when you crack them, just make sure there's no bits of shell or like, um, sometimes it's bits of red. Like, this bit is it's not too major, but if there's like a big piece, you should remove that because this will affect the texture of the custard. So just break all the eggs with a whisk and just mix them. Yeah. It's important if you mix them by hand because if you use something electric, um, it will affect it. It'll make it too stiff and you don't really want that. So just whisk it until it's all mixed together. And by the time you've done that, the sugar should be ready. So this is boiling. It's it's almost it's almost ready. It's interesting when the mixture boils, you notice that the sound gets like quieter. I, I don't know what the reason for this is, but if anyone knows, let me know. So when it boils, um, it tends to, like, the level of the mixture tends to come up really quickly. So make sure you don't walk away from the stove, because otherwise it will overflow. And it makes it very hard to clean up afterwards. Okay, so you can see it's rising up now. And then as soon as it's boiling, it's 
just take it straight off the heat. And then turn off the oven. And turn off the stove. Okay, now we need to leave this to cool before we mix the egg in. Otherwise the egg will go like when you put egg in a stir fry and you have like shredded pieces, which is not at all what you want. So leave that there for now. Okay, so once you've um, whisked the egg, the next step is to put in one level tablespoon of plain flour, sorry, of corn flour, and two level tablespoons of plain flour. Um, it's a good idea if you sift these, just because you need to make sure there's no lumps in the egg, um, otherwise it'll make lumps in the custard. So, if you don't know how big a tablespoon is, this is... This is technically a dessert spoon, but um, if you use slightly more than one of these, that will be enough. And once you've mixed it in, just make sure that there's no lumps at all. That's really important. Because if you get the lumps out now, it makes it much easier to get the lumps out later. And that's because there won't be as many lumps. But if you don't sift it and you just chuck it straight in, um, you'll end up with lots of lumps in the mixture, which is bad. So if your mixture looks like this and it's completely full of lumps, just go around and squash them all, either on the bottom or around the side, and just make sure that it's all mixed in. And this process will probably take you about 10 minutes because there's quite a lot of lumps. Okay, so after 10 minutes of squashing lumps, it should look something like this. Um, as you can see, it's there's not too many lumps left in it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, the less lumps, the better. So once you've got that, just check that your sugar mixture is cool and this can be poured straight into it. And then just use the spatula to get all the rest of the egg out. Okay, so now the next step is to put one level, um, one level tablespoon of butter straight into the mixture, like straight into the saucepan. And just make sure that it melts completely and mix the um, mix the egg and the sugar together completely as well. If you've let the mixture cool too much and it's not hot enough to cool to um, if you've let the mixture cool too much and it's not hot enough to melt the butter completely. You can melt it separately, like just put it in a glass and microwave it for like 10 seconds or something like that. Um, but usually you'll find that the mixture is enough to melt margarine. So just stir it until it's completely dissolved. Now, make sure there's no lumps before you do this. And make sure that everything's stirred in. Then put the saucepan back on the stove if it's not already there. And put the oven on low heat. Um, basically, you need to, need to heat this mixture Keep stirring it constantly and wait until it thickens, which will take about um, take about three minutes on gas. Might take a bit longer if it's electric. Once it's thick, um, remove it from heat. It should be thick enough to be like um, custard. You don't want it to you don't want it to burn, 
So just make sure that you keep stirring it, otherwise it'll stick on the bottom, which is not ideal. Now the mixture might look like it's really thin, but it will feel thicker and thicker very quickly. So make sure you keep stirring it. You can see there's already bits forming in the bottom. If the heat is too hot, just turn it down, because it will thicken eventually, even if it takes longer. But it's better to take longer than be burnt. Okay, so from going to liquid to this, I only took about five minutes. So once at this level, um, just remove it from the heat and squash out any more lumps. And then you can put it back on the heat until there's no more liquid, and so it's really thick. But you just have to do it basically back and forth because um, you don't want to burn the custard. So just bash the lumps on the sides. And the custard is um, kind of sloppy and thick. So it's thick like porridge. Then just remove it from the heat and turn off the stove. And now the next step is, just while this is cooling, um, is to make the casings for the Portuguese tarts. Um, the first step to do this is get the filo pastry. Now some recipes will say use puff pastry or butter puff. Um, I've tried three different types of pastry and three different types of custard. And I found that the filo pastry and this custard recipe works best together. Um, if you use puff pastry, it'll end up a bit like a mince pie or like a fruit tart, that kind of pastry. Um, or a bit, a bit like a croissant, actually. And if you use butter puff, well, butter puff is a bit like this picture, actually. Um, I found when I used butter puff pastry, it was very hard to deal with. It stuck to your fingers and it just tore very easily. So I'd recommend phyllo pastry out of all three types. Um, now with phyllo pastry it's important that um, when you take it out of the fridge um, you have to unwrap it and when you're actually using it you've only got about half an hour at most before the pastry dries out. So do what you have to do with it, and then put the rest back in the freezer as soon as possible. Otherwise, if it dries out, you can't really use it again. So once you've got the filo pastry out and you've put it um, to warm to room temperature, just one thing to do is to put in the vanilla. So one teaspoon of vanilla extract or vanilla essence, whichever you prefer, and just mix it into the custard. Okay, the next step is to preheat your oven to about 220 degrees. Um, when we cook it, it'll be about 200 degrees, but it's good to make it as hot as possible because um, you want the tart to be crisp, not um, not kind of soggy. So, what? Okay, so put the oven at about 225 degrees. Um, and just heat it for about 10 or 20 minutes, that kind of time. And while that's heating, we're going to make the pastry cups. So to do that, just get like a couple of spoons of margarine or butter. Um, I'm using Nutlex, which is a type of margarine. And just melt it in a glass. Um, just put like two spoons and microwave it for about 10 seconds. Then once you've done that, get piece of baking paper and get your filo pastry and unroll it. So when you first take it out of a mini plastic bag you just have to cut it out of the plastic bag and unfold it. You have to wait for it to thaw um, before you unroll it otherwise it'll tear because filo pastry is very thin so I don't know if you can see but yeah. It comes off in these very thin sheets. It's about as thick as paper. Um, okay, so 
once you've got the once you've got the filo pastry and it's thawing, just get a piece of baking paper and dip it in the um, margarine and then use that to grease each of the tins. Now even if you have non-stick um, tins, it's still a good idea to grease them just because it will make the outside of the pastry more crisp. So. You just have to kind of dip in the edge and then just go around each cup. Or if you've got spray grease, you can use that. Um, it's just that the reason I'm using margarine or butter is that it will make the edges brown. Whereas if you use like a spray can of olive oil, you won't have the same effect. So just go ahead and do that for all the cups if you like. It'll take about 18 tarts, so um, this is like a muffin tray. Okay, so once you've greased all of them, um, the next step is to unroll the filo pastry. So when you're working with filo pastry, you have to work very quickly, otherwise it'll dry out and become unusable. And if you find that it's not unrolling properly, it's usually because it's not quite thawed, um, or if it, if it is thawed, then it can be that um, the pastry is too old, but this is all I've got, so. You need to get like a sheet. You can work with small pieces or you can work with the whole sheet at a time, it doesn't really matter. And just get the margarine that you melted and put the pastry brush in. And then just paint onto the surface. So it's a good idea if you if you do this onto like a flat surface, it doesn't have to be completely wet, and then tear it into sheets and put um, like tear into pieces like this big and just place them in each cup, and then basically work them around so that you'll have um, the shape of a cup. Now for the, um, you can see the cups aren't going to be regular, that's fine. Um, just try and make it so that um, the whole surface, like the whole cup is filled with pastry. Um, you need about three sheets, um, or maybe four sheets depth. So like the thickness at the bottom should be about four sheets. Um, and just make it as high as you want because the custard has to go inside. Okay, so once you've put, uh, once you've made 18 cups, um, as you can see, they they don't have to be all perfect. It's actually better if they're not perfect, um, and you don't want to make pastry too thick. So, um, like you, you need the edges around here to be flexible because you're going to paint them in in a second. So it's important with the filo pastry that you wrap it up as quickly as possible. You'll notice that it feels drier. Um, you basically just have to wrap it up and put it back in the freezer. The next step is just to make dollops about this much of the custard and put them inside each one. You need them to be about half full. So if you don't have um, if you don't have them half full, then they'll be a bit hard to seal. And if they have too much custard, um, they'll like kind of overflow, which would be difficult. So just go through and do this for each one. Okay, and then the next step, just with the margarine that you've got left over, just get the brush and make sure it's quite wet. Um, you just have to kind of brush the edges in, but you will have to make sure that they're wet first, otherwise the pastry will break. 
I just paint them in so that they're in the custard. And make sure you brush between the other sheets as well, um, just so that it all sticks together. Because only the sheets that are brushed um, will go crisp and golden. If you just leave them straight, they'll just burn. So they're all basically ending up like little parcels of custard in the center and pastry around the outside. So just continue this process for all the others. Okay, so I finished buttering all these. This took about probably 10 minutes, something like that. Um, the next step, once you've done that, just make sure that all the edges are tucked, in, tucked into the custard. Um, and once that's done, just put them both trays in the oven and cook it at about 200 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Um, if your oven goes higher, you can make it hotter, but just keep an eye on it because you don't want it to burn. Okay, so I've cooked them for half an hour. I let them to cool for about five or 10 minutes, and then I've put them on a plate, and this is the end result. So I hope you enjoy this recipe, um, and check out more of the recipes on reciperaptor.com. These smell delicious and I'm going to eat at least one now. Um, if you want more recipes, you'll find them on the website as well. Um, that's pretty much it for this recipe, so I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.